blessings to you. I'm Ruben Abante. Welcome to the pulpit. Let me turn you over now to the sanctuary of the Lighthouse Bible Baptist Church. And may you be blessed with the preaching of the Word of God. John chapter 1 and verse 4. This is what is written. And these things write we unto you that your joy may be full. And then in chapter 2 and verse 1, we are in 1 John. Chapter 2 and verse 1, this is what John writes. My little children, these things write I unto you that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. And then in verse 26 of this same chapter, the Apostle Paul John writes, These things have I written unto you concerning them that seduce you. And then lastly here, in 1 John chapter 5 and verse 13, this is what it says. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. Now, what do you find in these verses? I believe you would immediately see that in these verses we see the reasons why John writes this book. Okay? Kaya ang ating pag-uusapan ngayong umagang ito, ngayong araw na ito, is the Word of God. What it does for us. Ang salita ng Diyos. Ano ang ginagawa nito para sa atin? Anong napapaloob sa salita ng Diyos para sa atin? Manalangin tayo. Dakilang Diyos, maraming salamat po 
sapagkat kami ay naririto, kami nagtitipon-tipon upang Panginoon kami dumulog sa iyo at tumunghay sa iyong salita at aming makita, Panginoon, ang yaman ng iyong katotohanan. Pagpalain mo nga po ang pagpapahayag na ito ng iyong mensahe, Panginoon, ng iyong salita and make this be a blessing to each one of us and not just so, dear God, but make this to be something that we will take into our hearts and into our lives because, Lord, this is your truth. And for whatever reason, John writes, may we take this truth, dear God, and live by it and get to know the Lord Jesus Christ, whom to know means life eternal. For this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. You may please be seated. This is Lighthouse Bible Baptist Church. We're not just Baptists. What we are is we are a people who believe the Bible as God's Word. Amen? We say, this is God's Word. This does not contain God's Word, but this is God's Word. Okay? In that the living Word, who is Christ, came, condescended. And He came to live in this earth. And He preached. He preached Himself. Because He is the Word. Siya ang berbo. And when he gave his word, ay ito'y narinig at uh, ito'y napaloob sa mga naging writers and one of which would be the Apostle John. And by them and uh, sa pamamagitan ng mga apostoles na ito, ng mga lalaking ito, now we have the New Covenant. We have the New Testament. And by this, we get to know God. We get to know the Lord Jesus Christ. I say it clearly and I say it emphatically. Wala pong kahit sino man na tunay na makakikilala sa Diyos, na tunay na makakikilala kay Kristo, at, at uh, ituring siyang bilang isang tagapagligtas at Panginoon, maliban na ito ay mahayag mula sa kaniyang salita. May nagtanong po sa akin, maaari bang makilala si Kristo outside of the Word of God? I say, hindi maaari. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Wala na pong ibang kaparaanan upang tayo ay magkaroon ng pananampalataya kundi sa pamamagitan lamang ng aklat na ito, ng salitang ito. Maaari na sa pamamagitan ng pagtingin sa kalawakan, pagtingin sa buong creation na ito, pagtingin sa kapaligiran, ay maaari tayo mag-conclude na mayroong isang makapangirihang Diyos na gumawa ng lahat. Bagaman, hindi po lahat na tumitingin sa kalawakan ay nagkukonclude na may Diyos. Yung iba, sa kaaaral nila, lalong lumalayo. Hindi po ba? Pero sa atin, no, sa habang nakikita natin ang kadakilaan ng buong creation, ay lalo nating namamalas at nahahayag sa atin na hindi maaaring ito ay nabuo lahat at nakikita natin na walang Diyos. No? Maliban na mayroong isang lumikha. At ito'y inihayag sa atin. So by creation, as how the, the Bible says it in Psalm 19, the heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament shows His handiwork. So by this, we get to know that there is a God omnipotent, all-knowing, na ito'y ginawa niyang lahat upang mamalas sa atin. So balit, hindi maaari that we can get to know God in a more personal way outside the Word of God outside the Bible. Kung kaya nga tayo ay nagpapahayag, tayo ay nagpipreach, so that we can get to know the Lord Jesus Christ and even get to know Him personally as Savior and as Lord. Ano ang aking sinasabing ito? It is this, that the Word of God comes to us as effectual. Anong ibig sabihin yan? Ito po ay epektibo sa lahat ng dahilan at purpose why it comes to us the Word of God. Kung kaya nga po ang salita ng Diyos ay sinasabi natin na may dating sa atin sa lahat ng sumasampalataya, okay? sa lahat ng naniniwala, sa lahat ng tumatayo sa salita ng Diyos, ito ay may effect sa kanila. It is effectual to those that believe. Subalit kung wala kang maaaring pagtingin sa salita ng Diyos bilang katotohanan, bilang salita ng Diyos, wala itong maaari maging effect. Nakikinig po ba tayo? 
For example, sila na maaaring tumingin sa Panginoong Heso Kristo bilang Panginoong Tagapagligtas, sila ang maaaring maligtas. For as long as you don't look at the Lord Jesus Christ as the Savior, you cannot be saved. For as long as you do not look at the Lord Jesus Christ as the only Lord, you cannot have Him as Lord. You can only take the Lord Jesus Christ as Lord based on how the Bible presents Him to be Lord. That cannot be a conditional Lord. He cannot be a conditional God based on however we think or whatever we think God is. God can only be God according to the Scriptures. Amen? Kaya kung wala kang pagsampalataya ng aklat na ito'y salita ng Diyos, you can never get to know God. You can never appreciate what He is. Because the Bible is only effective. It is effectual to those who believe. Okay? Maaari mong tanganan, maaari mong kapitan sapagkat sa iyo, ito ay totoo. For as long as you doubt, the promises of the Scriptures are not for you. Okay? You can never sing that song standing on the promises of God because you doubt it. Okay? I hope you understand this. At kahit kayo ng mga nanonood, you might be here today, you might have your own religion, but hey, this is not religion. This is God's Word. What I present to you as the Christ, as the Lord Jesus Christ, is not just someone that comes out of a figment of imagination. He is real. Amen? Alam niyo po, kung maaari lang sana ang lahat ng aking nakikilala ay maging mana ng palataya. Kung maaari lang sana na para bang marketing ay lahat ay bumili. Ano? Pero hindi po ganun eh. Kung maaari lang sana ang lahat ng pumupunta rito, pumapasok sa building na ito and who worships with us become Baptist. Kung maaari lang. Pero hindi po eh. I appreciate that. I know that. I realize that. Kung kaya alam nyo kahapon, for example, we did a big medical mission. Actually, we don't just call it medical mission. It is actually a wellness program. Okay? Ano nga yun mo? Ano yung pagkakasabi? Okay, it's a community wellness outreach. Tandaan niyo yan, ha? What we're doing is not just a medical mission. It's a community wellness outreach. Bakit po gayon? So, pagkat we're the only ministry here that keeps track of the wellness of our community. Ang lahat ng dumadako rito, the 2,700, I mean the 2,077 who came here who were extended services, maraming mga medical services, we're concerned sa kanila. At sinabi ko kahapon sa devotion, sabi ko, ginagawa ba natin to? No? Dahil para tayo mga politiko? No, we're not doing this because we're politicians. Ginagawa ba natin to dahil kailangan natin ng boto? Walang tumatakbo rito sa politics. Ginagawa ba natin to simply because we want you know, to do business? No, we don't. Okay? We do this because of what we are as Christians. Amen? Wala nang ibang, ano ba, ang tawag dyan, hugot o hatak or whatever. Wala na. Simply because the Lord Jesus Christ is in our hearts and we ought to do good to our community. Amen? As the Lord Jesus Christ is merciful, we want to show mercy to people around us. Why? Because God's Word is effective in our lives. Amen? Wala po tayong underlying na mga kung anong evil motivations in doing that. You see, we just want to be good to them because God is good to us. The love of God constrains us. Yan ang sinasabi natin. But anyway, what am I saying here? Ito, na ang salita ng Diyos ay effectual sa lahat. At ito ay may pagkilos sa lahat ng sumasampalataya sa Kanya. Kung wala kang pananampalataya sang ayon sa salita ng Diyos, walang pagkilos ito sa iyo. You can never claim any promises. However, if you take the Word of God as it is the Word of God, if you take the writings like, for example, ang sinasabi sa ating binasang talata, ang sabi ni John, These things write we unto you. It is effective para sa kanila na tumatanggap ng nasulat na ito. Hindi lang po natin tinatanong, may nasusulat ba? No. 
kundi kinukuha natin ito na para sa atin. Ano ang significance ito para sa atin? Okay. Well, let me go through some of this. But first, let us appreciate some other verses, some other passages which John wrote. In John chapter 20 and verse 31, Anong sabi ni John? John chapter 20, we'll go to the Gospel of John. John wrote several books. Okay? The Apostle John. We call him John the Beloved. Siya ang sumulat ng Gospel of John. Siya ang sumulat ng 1st, 2nd, 3rd John. At siya ang sumulat ng the book of Revelation. Five books in the New Testament. And he writes this in John 20, 31. But these are written that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing ye might have life through His name. So outside of our belief in this book as the Word of God, walang pagiging effective ito. Amen? But then, yun ang pinaka sinasabi natin, but these are written that ye might believe. In Revelation chapter 1 and verses 17 to 19, again, John writes here, And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead, and he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last, and he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore, amen, and have the keys of hell and of death. Write these things which thou hast seen, and the things which are, and the things which shall be hereafter. Now, John did not just simply write these books because he wanted to write. No, because he wrote according to how he was moved by the Holy Ghost. Okay? So, mayroong pakay, mayroong dahilan, mayroong purpose. I was looking at how John wrote the Gospel of John. And I was trying to compare his writing, no? to Matthew, to Luke, to Mark. At isa sa aking naobserbahan, only, only in the book of John can we find the words, no, na sinasabi ng Panginoon, verily, verily. Those combinations, verily, verily. In other words, yung sinasabi ng Panginoon na truly, truly. Yun ang equivalent niyan. You can only find those combination sa Gospel of John. Matthew narrates differently. Okay? Pero napaka-emphatic. Truly, truly. Verily, verily. For example, when the Lord Jesus Christ was talking to Nicodemus, ano sinabi niya? Verily, verily, I say unto you, ye must be born again. Truly, truly. Isn't it not that it's unrecorded, it's John chapter 14 and verse 6. And the Lord Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So, napakaganda ng pagkakabahagi nito ni John. And out of these verses that we read, I'd like to give you five pointers here. Ano ba ang pagkilos ng salita ng Diyos as written sa atin? Okay. Ano ba ang pagkilos ito? Anong maaaring gawin para sa atin ng salita ng Diyos, lalo na sa kanila na may pagtanggap at may pagsampalataya? Okay? Ano ba ang pagkilos? How does the Word of God, how does the Bible work in us, especially work in those that believe? Firstly, let's go to 1 John chapter 2. 1 John chapter 2, and let's be reading verses 13 and 14. Here, John writes, I write unto you, fathers, because ye have known him that is from the beginning. I write unto you, young men, because ye have overcome the wicked one. I write unto you, little children, because ye have known the father. I have written unto you, fathers, because ye have known him that is from the beginning. I have written unto you, young men, because ye are strong, and the word of God abideth in you, and ye have overcome the wicked one. What do we see here? 
alam nyo, kamang, kamanghamangha na sa isang passage na ito, na sinulat ni John, he actually gets to all ages. Fathers, young men, little children. Baka magtanong kayo, well, pastor, paano naman kami, babae kami, mother kami? Well, kasama na kayo dun. Okay? All ages. All people within all the brackets of life. Okay? Nakikinig po ba tayo? Why? Simply because the Word of God is for everyone. Sabi nga nung isang restaurant, no? They are for every all. <laughs> okay. But for everyone. No matter anumang edad, anumang kalalagyan sa buhay, anumang challenge natin na hinaharap, anumang pagsubok, anumang circumstance, anuman ang ating kalalagyan. Alam niyo po, lahat tayo ay may pinanggagalingan. Ang mga ama, ang mga magulang, mayroong kayong mga kalalagyan. Tama ba? Kayong mga young men, young men ngayon, young men nung araw, di ba? Meron kayong kalalagyan. Lalo na kayong mga tinatawag na mga millennials. Ika nga. Okay, sino ba mga millennials dito? Huh? Mga challenging mga buhay. Paano na kaya kayo in the future? Di ba? Oo, sabi nila, iba naman ang kalalagyan namin ngayon compared sa iba, di ba? Iba raw ang mga dating ngayon. Well, for whatever, listen, the Word of God has something for you. Hindi lang kayo. How about little children? Okay? Why? Simply because the Word of God has something for everyone. I look yesterday, umiikot-ikot ako sa dami ng mga taong naririto. Out of the many walks of life. No? Abe, isipin mo open house, ang lighthouse sa wellness program na ito, lahat nag extend tayo ng mga medical services. Can you imagine 375 na mga volunteers? Okay? Eh, mabuti na lang, mas marami pa rin yung member natin. Ano? Okay, praise God for that. Thank you sa lahat sa inyong tumulong kahapon. Naghirap kayo, nagpuyat kayo, ano? tiniis nyo ang gutom. Thank you, thank you. Ah, marami ang pinagpala. But they all come here. Alam mo, yung isa na sa lubong ko, mayroong karga-karga, hindi, hindi naman karga-karga, pero mayroong hatak-hatak na apat na anak. Okay? Lahat magpapacheck up. <laughs> Can you imagine that? Mayroong mga naka-wheelchair. No? Mayroong mga, well, ibat-ibang kalalagyan. And I could only say to myself, thank you for the grace of God in Lighthouse that we can extend the love of God and the blessing of God to these people. Amen? Oh, yes. Sabi nung isang dumako rito, first time nilang pumasok sa lighthouse, sabi, namin, sabi nila, Bishop, meron palang ganitong lugar dito sa loob ng tatalon? We never imagined, we never expected that there is a place like this inside tatalon. At hindi lang yan, that you are yourself a church. You know, and you do this thing. Yung may mga ibang simbahan, hindi maipasok eh. Kaya kailangan pa magkaroon ng kalamidad para magbukas ang pintuan. Kayo hindi. Well, I can only thank God for that. Okay? But hey, ito po ang totoo. Lahat tayo may kalalagyan. We have problems. We have situations. Some people are challenged because they feel they are insignificant in life. Di ba? Ayaw man nating aminin, pero yun ang totoo dyan. We feel like we're insignificant. Parang wala tayong kulang tayo sa pansin. <laughs> Di ba? Okay? Some people feel like they're irrelevant. Some people like, hey, para naman kaming walang kaalaman. They're not known. Okay? They are branded as people having no knowledge. They feel like they're defeated. They feel like they're weak. Ito lang pagkakabanggit ni John ng mga fathers and young men and young little children. You see, kahit sa ating mga pamilya, ang tingin natin sa mga bata, wala namang kamalayan, di ba? Right? We cannot be part of major decisions. We cannot be part of something significant. Why? Bata ka pa, wala ka pang ganyan, marami ka pang kakainin and everything. Are you listening? Di ba? 
O, oh, para bang pag sinasabihan, sinasabihan tayo, Hoy, papunta ka pa lang, pabalik na ako. Right? Ganyan ang challenge sa buhay ng marami. But hey, John says, I write these things to you, fathers, young men, and little children, and no matter you feel like you're insignificant, you, no matter how you feel like, hey, wala kang relevant sa buhay na ito, you are important to God. You see, anong dating nat, anong dating ng, pang, ng salita ng Diyos sa atin? This is God's written word to each one. Amen? Ano ang palagay mo kapag sinusulat ang kaya? No? Makatanggap kaya tayo ng isang sulat galing sa isang milyonaryo? Abay, baka itago mo pa yung sulat, hindi ba? Right? Eh lalo pa kung isang will ang ibinibigay sa iyo, sinusulat sa iyo. Right? But we have the word of God, all the promises applied to us are ours to claim, are ours to keep. Amen? Such is the word of God. Lalo na mga kapatid, ang lahat ng mga pangako ng salita ng Diyos sa kanila na sumasampalataya. Kaya nga, matibay na matibay ang sinasabi ni John. These things write we unto you that ye may know. And we know, 1 John 5.20 says, And we know that the Son of God is come and hath given us an understanding that ye may know Him that is true, that we are in Him that is true, even in His Son Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. Isipin nyo, how can we know of eternal life except by this word? And God made us significant. God made us relevant. God made us important to Himself. For God so loved the world of man that He gave. Amen? Anyway, so ang unang bahagi ng ating mensahe ay ito. The Word of God makes us significant. It makes us relevant. Anong pakiramdam mo ngayon sa sarili mo? You're not important? Read the Word of God if you feel like you're not being important. Amen. You're not significant? Hey, there's a Christ. There is a Christ, the Son of God who came. Came down from His glory to die for you. Who loved you. He gave His life for you. Gave Himself on the cross for you. How can the creator of the universe come down and give his life for us? Who am I that the king should bleed and die for? Who am I that he would say, not my will, but thine for? And the song continues, the answer I may never know, why he ever loved me so, that to an old rugged cross he'd go for who am I? Listen, God's word makes each one significant. Number two. In 1 John chapter 5 and verse 13, John writes, These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God that ye may know. Know what? Know that you have eternal life. And who are they who have? They that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. Ibig sabihin mga kapatid, sila na may pagsampalataya kay Kristo bilang Panginoon at Tagapagligtas, sila ang may buhay na walang hanggan at batid nila. Okay? Batid nila. They know that they have eternal life. And as sure as I am here speaking to you, and uttering these words, I say it with all confidence. Hey, I know I have eternal life. And this is what everyone who are in Christ, who have that faith, and who, who have said that prayer of faith and trust in Him, of repentance and faith, they know that they have eternal life. Do you know that? Do you know that really? I hope you know that. 
I hope you know that. Kayo mga nakikinig, saan man nakakaabot ang mensahe nito. I hope you know that. Why? Because the Word of God makes us to know. Alam niyo po ang kawalan ng kaalaman ay ano para sa isang tao. Do you know that it renders us insecure? Tama po ba? Ang walang kaalaman ay nagdudulot sa isang tao ng insecurities. Correct. But once we get to know, but once we get to be, to have that confidence, once we get to know this blessed assurance, that's what we have, blessed assurance, it makes us secure. See, the Word of God then makes us secure. Hindi lang that it makes us significant or it makes us important, or it makes us relevant. But the Word of God makes us secure, erasing, taking away the insecurities that we have. Why? Because this is a book of knowledge. Okay? Wala pong lugar sa salita ng Diyos ang doubts. In fact, isa yan sa mga sinabi ng Panginoon, sa mga apostolas, Wherefore, why didst thou doubt? Okay? Tata used to say this. Kung maaalala ng iba rito. No? Never believe your doubts. And never doubt what you believe. Correct? And when you have those quality, that quality, in fact, it makes you secure. I believe in a Christianity that is secure. See, our relationship with Christ is secure. His being Lord, His being Savior is secure. Our possession of eternal life is secure. John 1.12 says, But as many as received Him, okay, sila na tumanggap sa Kanya bilang Panginoon at Tagapaglitas. Ano sinabi dito? To them gave He power to become what? the sons of God or the children of God. Even to them, or that is, ang sinasabi to ni John, them that believe on His name. It makes us to be children of God. Yun nga lang, ang pagkakasabi sa King James ay sons of God. Why sons? Well, ang isang explanation dyan ay ito. Sapagkat sa Orientals, mga kapatid, ang kalalagyan o ang pribilehyo ng sons ay iba sa pribilehyo ng daughters. Did you know that? O palagay ko, kayo, tayo mga Asians, alam natin lahat yan eh. Kung kaya in respect, in regards, in regards sa privileges, sons ang ginagamit dito. We are privileged. We have those privileges. Okay? Extended to sons. Look at John 3.18. John 3.18. He that believeth on him is not condemned. But he that believeth not is what? Condemned already. Because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Go down to verse 16. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him, does not that verse give to us something that is sure and secure, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Written, I say this to everyone, the Bible is written and it works in those that believe as something that gives us security. The Bible makes us secure. Sa buhay na ito, mahirap ang walang seguridad. Tama po ba? Mahirap pag wala kang makitang security. Nako! Okay? Ano ang nasa iyo pag wala kang security? Agam-agam. Takot. Tama po ba? Oo. Eh, yun lang bagay na aalis ka. Hindi mo alam kung ano oras ka darating. Nako, sinabi ko sa'yo. Diba? Ewan ko ba, 
Pati ang traffic dito, hindi na secure. Ang daming problema. Ang katabi mo sa jeep, ang katabi mo sa bus, secure ka ba? Nako, parang hindi rin. Malaki ang problema. Pati ituloy ito mga nangyayari sa ating kapaligiran. Sinosolve ang krimen. Pero teka muna, yun nagsosolve, criminal din pala. May security ba? Tama po ba? But hey, you know what? The Word of God makes us secure. Number three, what does the Word of God make us? Ano ang pagkilos ng salita ng Diyos sa kanila na sumasampalataya? 1 John chapter 2, verse 1. My little children. Ano ba ang katangian ng mga maliliit na bata? Ha? Let me ask you, ano ang katangian ng maliliit na bata? Ah, nako. Meron silang sariling mundo. Tama ba? Hindi nila alam ang standards. Hindi sila sumusunod sa kung anong dapat. Tama ba? Oo. Napapansin ko yung anak ni Rene tsaka ni Butch eh. Paglapag na paglapag sa babae. Oh, takbo ka agad. Oh. Nakawala na ka agad eh, no? Eh, kanina, nagsa Sunday school tayo. Alam niya naman ang Sunday school natin, ano? Meron tayong mga pledges, di ba? Oh, eh, bay, gustong bumitaw ni Faith. <laughs> okay. Ganun ang mga bata. O, yung apo kong si Seth. Kahit nagmumunting ilaw sila, meron siyang sarili niyang action. I would often tell, Seth, you follow. I mean, you be in the line. Abay, sabihin ba naman sa akin? No, Lolo, but because I'm a leader, I should be up front. My goodness. If you're a leader, you should be the first one to be in the line. Ganun talaga ang mga bata. Anong tawag doon? Pasaway. <laughs> Kaya ang sabi ni John, my little children. Ah, sa inyo mga pasaway. Parang ganun yata ang sinasabi ni John. Ano? These things write I unto you that ye sin not. Are you listening? That ye sin not. Eh kasi po naman, Pastor, alam mo, yung bawal kasi mas masarap. Challenging. Maganda kaya yung adventurous, Pastor. Kaya maraming tao, hindi na pinapansin ito. I mean, they like a Christianity na walang standards. Tama. They never want a Christianity na sumusunod ka sa kaunong dapat. Okay? Para sa kanila, Christianity is something that gives me freedom. No, no, no. Christianity is not a freedom to do what you want to do. Christianity is rather a freedom from sin. And all that goes along with sin. Kung kaya nga ang sabi ni John dito, I write unto you, little children, that ye sin not. Now, if any man sin, sapagkat ang Kristiyano naman na nakakasala rin, we do not believe in what they call sinless perfection. For as long as we are in this flesh and we are in this body, we sin. Okay? Pero ang sabi ni John, and if any man sin, what do we have? We have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. So praise God. We have an advocate. We have a defense attorney. Otherwise, the devil comes up and accuses us of a lot of things. Right? But then, here is what the Word of God makes us. These things are written that we may not sin and even sin willfully. Amen. Bottom line, anong, point, anong punto po ito? The Word of God makes us holy. Are we listening? Ay, pastor, kailangan po ba ang holiness ngayon? Hindi ba ano lang yan? Pagpapakabait. Na. Just how serious is the subject holiness before God? Can we go to some scriptures? Hebrews 12, 14. Let's see how serious holiness is before God. Follow peace with all men and what? Holiness. 
without which no man shall see the Lord. Without which no man shall see the Lord. Alam niyo po, we believe in the one attribute of God, na He is holy. And because He is holy, He cannot look at sin. Amen? And I mean all forms of sin. Kung kaya nga, ang banal na kasulatan ay may pag-iingat na tinuturuan ang mga mana ng palatea that if you are a believer in Christ, then we should be separated from the world and from sin. However you want to think of the Christianity that you want. Because in 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verses 14 to 18, let's look at this passage. 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verses 14 to 18. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? And what conquered hath Christ with Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God, as God hath said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. And I say it again, off from what this verse tells us. Wala pong kahit anuman na fellowship or agreement dapat ang totoong mga mana ng palataya sa kahit anuman mga kapatid na identified sa mundong ito, no matter what you call that, be that fashion and fad and whatever this world is known for. Nakikinig po ba tayo? Maliwanag po yan. Ano mang itsura na nakikita natin sa mundong ito, Kung ang buong mundo ay nagmumura, huwag nawa ang mga mana ng palataya. Kung ang buong mundo ay sumusunod sa isang fashion na katulad na kung anong klaseng buhay gusto nila, hindi ang mana ng palataya. Wala sa etsura, wala sa tunog, wala sa amoy, wala sa kilos, wala sa lakad. Nakikinig po ba tayo? Why? Simply because there is a standard ng salita ng Diyos. And this is effective to everyone that believe. Kaya ang sabi dito sa verse 17, look, look at verse 17 of the same chapter, 2 Corinthians 6. Wherefore, come out from among them and be ye what? Separate. Ito naman po ay hindi separation na para bang gumawa ka ng sarili mong mundo. Why? Because we are still in earth. Pero, Yung lakarin nila, yung uri ng buhay nila, wag nating ibuhay bilang mga mana ng palataya. Why? 1 Thessalonians 4.7 1 Thessalonians 4.7 For God hath not called us unto what? Uncleanness. But unto what? Holiness. Ibig sabihin mga kapatid, holiness is equivalent to being clean. Nagkikinig po ba tayo? Kaya kung mukha kang marumi, abay, hindi dapat yun. Kristiyano ka eh. Alisin mo na ang pagiging itsurang marumi. Amen? Kaya ayun, sabihin na nila na napaka-stricto ko bilang isang pastor. But I never want our young people na maging itsurang marumi. Correct? Oh. Ba't kailangan ba, pastor, maligo muna kami bago pumunta rito? Ba't natural naman? Naman. Tama ba? Pupunta ka ba sa Malacanang? Sa opisyon nila presidente na hindi ka naliligo? Ano ka ba? Tama? Come on. Oh, eh yung mga iba, pupunta sa church. Anong su- suot-suot? Gutay-gutay na kung ano-ano itsura. Pupunta ka ba sa Malacanang na gano'n ang itsura mo? And here we come into the presence of God. Yan ang sinasabi ko. Sometimes people just do not know 
Now, come on. Kahit anong sabihin mo, ang mahabang buhok sa lalaki ay itsurang marumi. Tama. Hindi ba ang tawag sa maikling ano? Clean cut? Oh, ba't naging clean cut ang itsura? Lang sinatawag. Clean cut. Tama ba? Yun nga ang clean eh. Eh, ba't gusto mo ang clean ka? Am I being so strict? No. Because the Bible teaches, hey, the Word of God makes us to be holy, makes us to be clean. Kaya kung ikaw ay nabubuhay sa karumhan, kahit sabihin mong ikay kristyano, wala kang alam dito. That's plain as it is. Get to know God. Get to know His Word. You are making a standard of your own and not the standard of the Scriptures. 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 15 to 16. Anong sabi rito? But as He which has called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation, because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. Ay, Pastor, ayoko na po ng Bible ninyo. Pwede, fine. Say it. But I tell you this. The Bible is true and effective and effectual to those who believe in it. Number four. Number four. First John chapter 2, verse 26. These things have I written unto you concerning them that, what? Seduce you. Hmm. Ang seduction pala nasa Bible? Oo. Oh, oh. Pero ang seduction, hindi ginagawa ng mga mana ng palataya. Ginagawa ng mundo. And everyone is tempted. Did you know that? Everyone is tempted. And the more godly you want to live, the more temptations come to you. Right? Oh, but Pastor, ako hindi ako natetempt. Oh, baka ungodly ka. Para natural na lang sa iyo yun. Okay. But hey, look at this. These things have I written unto you concerning them that seduce you. Concerning all the temptations that come to you. Concerning all, all the things that come to you. All the, wow, wow. What makes you? Ano ang tawag mo sa isang tao that give in to such things? Kung halimbawa, ang tao na palaging may fear or doubt ay insecure. Ano ang tawag mo sa tao na palaging nagigive in sa mga kung ano-anong dumarating sa kanya. Anong tawag mo sa kanya? Eh di unstable. Right? Eh nagigive in eh. Alam mo kasi, pastor, weakness ko yan. Tama. Alam niyo kahapon, bilib ako sa mga taga lighthouse. Yung mga doktor, kasi binigyan natin sila ng token, matapos sila magsabi, bawal ang matamis. Yung mga dentist, bawal kumain ng mga ganyan. Ang token natin, leche flan. Ay, yema ba yun? Yema cake. Oh, sorry, hindi ko kasi alam kasi pinagbawal na tingnan ko eh. Ganun pa rin. Well, anyway, thank you doon sa Miami Cakes for doing that. But anyway, see, alam nyo, temptation yun sa mga may diabetes. <laughs> Pero, we live in a world that, are, that is full of temptation. And we live in a world na ang mga kahit na mga tunay na mana ng palataya remain to be unstable. Remain to be weak. Come on now. Eh, mga kaibigan mo lalo na, sige na, isa lang. Hindi, wag ayoko, kristyano ko. Isa lang, isa lang, sige na, kahit konti lang. Sige na nga. O, di ba? So what that does that what does that render you? Unstable. But the word of God makes us stable. Firm. Strong. Nakikinig ba kayo? Kaya nga I am not simply inviting you to come here and listen to messages. See, the reason why we come and hear this message is because we want to be strong. We want to be stable. Okay? Anong sabi ng Psalm 119 verse 11? Thy word have I hid in mine heart that I might not sin against thee. Your word
Lord, I take it to heart so that I might be strong against temptations. Amen. Alam niyo po, dito sa Lighthouse, we take care na ang ating mga young people know what they should. And I appreciate people, young people coming to me, Pastor, can I talk to you please? Why? I just have one concern. And what would I tell them? Be firm. Be strong. Tama ba? Oh yes. However, this world would be so enticing. Psalm 119 verse 9. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? How? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. You come out and you begin to have business and you begin to mingle with everyone. What do you have? Temptations all around you. But hey, because of God's word, you can be strong. Lastly, anong meron sa atin sa salita ng Diyos? 1 John chapter 1 and verse 4. 1 John 1 and verse 4. Can you read with me this passage? Very good passage. And these things write we unto you that your joy may be full. What does the Word of God make us? Ano ginagawa sa atin ang salita ng Diyos? It makes us to be joyful. It makes us to be filled with joy. Ang joy ba? Tawa lang? No. Joy is something that comes from the heart. Joy is something when you have the peace of God that passes all understanding. Joy is something that's in the heart na hindi free from all fears, free from all doubts, free from all guilt. Amen? Free from all things that dumarating sa atin na meron ng uncertainty. That is joy. And we have joy simply because why? Philippians 3, 19 to 21. Ano sinasabi rito? Philippians 3, 19 to 21, And to know the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge, that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God, now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us, unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus. John chapter 15 and verse 11, what does the Lord say to his disciples? These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. And the apostle John, who heard these words uttered by the Lord himself, writes, this verse and these things write we unto you that your joy may be full. Hear, hear what the preaching says today. Get the word of God to our hearts. Because it is effectual. It is effectual to those who listen. It is effectual to those who believe. The word of God makes us joyful. The word of God makes us stable. The word of God makes us holy. The Word of God makes us secure. The Word of God makes us significant. Would you take His Word today? Let's stand and pray. Oh, the laughter is gone And the sound of the song that we sang slowly faded away. Simple joys that we knew when we walked close with you, hand in hand in the cool of the day, are just men.
Yet we hold to the hope that the music will come back again. Bring back the glory. Won't you show us what life is for? Bring back the glory. Make us open once more. Bring back the music, the trust, the wonder that's just like a child who has never known pain. Bring back the Give me a cause that is grand and a reason to stand that calls for the best I can see. Something worthy to live for, a reason to give everything that I ever could be. Oh, there must I need you to give me a glimpse of eternity. You are the glory. You have shown us what life is for. You known pain you are the glory you are the glory you are the glory that brings us together Today in this episode of The Pulpit, where we feature the services of the Lighthouse Bible Baptist Church. If you have not received the Lord Jesus Christ into your heart, and you have not had the experience of God's saving grace, I invite you, let Jesus Christ come into your heart. The Bible says, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thy heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Pray this prayer, Lord Jesus. I am a sinner. I cannot save myself. Thank you for dying on the cross for me. I receive you now into my heart as my Savior and as my Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. And with that prayer, is the faith in your heart that the Lord Jesus Christ is in you as your Lord and Savior. God bless you today. Join us again next week for another edition of The Pope.